Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining me today. Um, you've had a, a massive impact on my life. I've been to the school three times. Yeah. I've got a years cleanse. I've been a member of the Institute for the Work. And it's a life-changing experience. Oh, I love you found it. Isn't it just amazing to be able to unravel our thoughts, make sense of them, and be yeah. left with a lightheartedness that is authentic? Yes, yes, absolutely. And it was so profound for me that I've just been passing it on ever since. Oh, that's ever so since. beautiful. <laughs> it's like we just can't help it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I wanted them to find the peace. Uh, yeah. And the clarity that I had that I gained from doing the work. Yes. And um, so I've been able to help women and men in their relationships and help them come together in their oh, relationships. Oh, so beautiful. And, <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, um, I mean, the, one of the most profound books was I Need Your Love. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to hear your thoughts on relationships and um, how you think they can be more successful for men and women coming together. To, to love to love someone in, if I'm having a relationship with someone, I have to love what I'm believing about them. Not mm. just thinking about them, but I have to love what I'm thinking and believing about them before I can love them. Yeah. Because yeah. people are, they can never be more or less than who we believe them to be. So if I don't if I don't love or feel connected or care about you, I have to look to my own mind. Mm. And this is just the most amazing news. It means that rather than trying to change our relationship or change our partner, we just do the work, as you and I, as you and I would say, and, mm. and, and for everyone, we identify what we're believing about that person in our relationship. We identify those thoughts that we're thinking and believing about them, and we question them, and then we have a, a different partner. We have an, a totally different partner than the one we were angry at. For example, if I have the thought that Stephen, my husband, is wrong, how do I react when I believe he's wrong then I'm going to try to change his mind. If he doesn't change his mind, it means he doesn't care about me. It means we're separate. It means he's on and on and on. But who would I be without the thought he's wrong? Yeah. I'd be listening to his idea of what we're discuss of the topic. Yeah. I'd be listening to how listening and understand how he sees it. So I have mine, he has his, I'm connected, and I don't have to teach him right and wrong like he's three or four years old. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm discovering who he really is. So if there is a separation in, in my marriage, in other words, if I'm not feeling connected to Stephen, then I look to what I'm believing about Stephen, not Stephen. Mm -hmm. And every time that happens, I'm connected, we have an amazing relationship, and I continue mm -hmm. to grow because those times when I think he's wrong, I learn so much. I come to see that more often than not, or as often, that he was right. And mm -hmm. so I have grown. So mm -hmm. that, you know, for me, is it's the best news I can possibly find. No one has to change for me. Yes. You know, I just question what I'm believing about someone and and their identity in my world completely shifts and so does mine mm. Mm. is that is that linked to what you said um i re remember you saying that no two people have ever met yes yeah exactly linked exactly that way it's like i don't know stephen mm. stephen is who i believe him to be and i call that knowing stephen but do I, do I, do I, you know? Who, yeah. who is he beyond what I believe him to be? Mm. And that leaves me very respectful and very open so he continues to 
as he continues to show me, and we have this relationship, I continue to grow and appreciate him so much. Mm. So could you say more, Katie, about I need your love? Is that true? What, what, what would you say about that, please? Well, if I need Stephen's love, mm. then what is it lacking in me that I would need him to fill? Mm. And how can I, it, it's like I have to use him to be filled. There's a codependency there. So if he says something like, I'm too busy to help you, Katie, and I feel unloved, then I'm going to blame him. Mm. But if he says, you know, I can't help you, I'm too busy, Katie, yeah. in my life, out of this question mine, I just get excited. It, it just means there's another way. It's like an it, it's like this great mystery. I get to find the answer. And I know it's always there. So mm. I don't have to look too far. I just, mm. you know, just, just open my mind and there it is. But um, when I'm needing someone's love, it's, it's, mm. um, it can get really ugly when I perceive them as not loving or caring about no. me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would just, you know, um, those Judge Your Neighbor worksheets are free at thework.com, and, and they can go to your website and probably find it. Yes. And um, so I would judge my husband, in this case, and all the thoughts I had for him, let's say we were arguing, I would go back to that situation in my mind, and yes. I would just anchor in that argument, and yeah. I would identify what I was thinking and believing then. Mm -hmm. And I would write those thoughts down on the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. And that mm -hmm. worksheet is a guide. It helps us through the argument. It's very simple to fill out. It's just very short, simple sentences. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then question what I was believing about him. And then it changes our relationship for the good. Yeah. And would you ever share what you've written on your Judge Your Neighbor worksheet with your partner or do it together? Well, you know, if he's open to it and it happens that he is, yeah. then um, um, I, you know, you know, the way I like it is when he, if he would write one on me, ah. you know, yeah. and... And then it's, it's good either way. But yeah. I love to, you know, when someone's arguing with us, if mm. we really, really listen, we learn so much about the partner they're living with. And it's not necessarily us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who Stephen believes me to be and who I am don't yeah. always match. Yes. So, but yeah, either way, you know, um, if, he, if he's open to it, I would write a Judge and Able worksheet and read it to him. Then he could facilitate me. Wow. Yeah. And that really is, oh, it's an ego. It's, a, it's an ego killer. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. It's so good. It's so good. But if I write a worksheet on him... Then, um, I mean, if he writes a worksheet on me, then um, um, it's so equally powerful. It's just, is, is your partner open to it? That's my hesitation. It's, and we never know if they're open to it or not. But mm. if I think it would hurt him, then mm. I do it alone. Mm. I just do my worksheet call a facilitator or just facilitate it myself, just alone in silence. And until I love Stephen, my work's not done. Because until I love Stephen, I can't connect with the rest of the world. Mm. And if I can't connect with the rest of the world, I could do a worksheet on the, on the rest of the world, and then I could love Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you define love, Katie? <clears throat> Connection. 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 No, you know, I, 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 on my walk this morning, I noticed 
my mind, you know, it it's about this and that and this person and that person and and it's so beautiful that on Instagram I had to thank everyone for being with me because walking alone, you know, we take the whole world with us in our head. And because I love the way I think about those people in my head, my heart's open and I'm connected with everyone and everything. So um, it's, I mean, who wouldn't think, who wouldn't be grateful that the whole world lives within? And, and if we don't love everyone that we think about, then we don't like being silent because it's like a war zone in there. Mm -hmm. So that's why the work is so powerful. We, the mind begins to connect with itself. The mm -hmm. mind ends the war with itself when it understands itself. So inquiry is so important. Ultimately, mm -hmm. we have to deal with ourselves. And, yeah. and that's, what, that's what this work does for people, you know, inquiry. Yes. So how, how does that segue into those who are single and looking to be in a relationship? Well, you know, I have some experience there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, before I met Stephen, um, I had no idea of, a, of wanting a partner at all because I was so in touch with myself. It's like I, I had a partner. It was me. And and the one I'm with, who whatever people that was, and I was doing a lot of traveling then, just home very rarely. And my home was an office in Manhattan Beach at, here in California. And and um, so I met a lot of people, and and um, and. No need for a partner because I was happy and, and everyone and everything was my partner. In other words, I'm connected. Yes. So um, it was the, the man or woman on the street, a flower, a tree, a child's cry. Mm. And, and then when I met Stephen, he was so clear that mm. that. He was my partner. That he, that he wanted me as a. He was so clear, and I just listened and listened and listened. And I thought, well, I love being with me. Of course, he loves being with me. Of course, everyone would love being with me if they just really knew me. And I mean, you know, this this had, and it. But it just made sense. And so when he asked me to marry him, I did not have a reason why I shouldn't. Not one valid reason. He was kind. Mm. He's very bright. Mm. He's, um, he's, I just keep going back to kind. Mm. So it's such a kind mind. And, and so, you know, this goes beyond the physical body and, and for your your viewers, I love that people understand that even a physical body is what we believe it to be. It's like mm -hmm. he's too tall, he's too short, he's too fat, he's too thin, he this, he that. But if we question that, mm -hmm. it leaves us with, with, you know, when we begin to live together, let's say you meet someone, you begin to live together, and you're not looking at their body very often. I mean, even though you see it all the time and your mind says, well, that's pleasant. Yeah. The first time, <laughs> the first time or sexy or, or, you know, but the first time you think he doesn't care about me. He yeah. doesn't really want to. Oh, it's just the mind will just rip their minds to shreds. And and if you don't love what you think, you can't stay connected with your partner. So it's the mind that, not their mind, your mind that you need to deal with if you really want to stay connected to a partner. So people looking for a partner, I can just say, you know, it's unnecessary. Don't even look. It's yeah. not possible not to have a relationship. You know, and 
we look at a person's body and we think, not him, not him, not him, not him, in, in the case of, of, uh, of the way that I was before the work found me. And I had every reason in the world just looking at someone, or they would laugh, or, or, or they would have a look on their face, and I would think, oh, that's sexy, or oh my gosh, she's so attractive. But my mind would be doing a whole story on this poor person I've never met. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, 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 and then um, if I believed it, then I was always left wanting. Mm. But that, you know, something beyond the body, that's what we live with day in and day out. Will you help me with the dishes, sweetheart? No, it's not your turn, da, 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 you know. And, <laughs> and so... Um, with my mind, he says, no, I don't want to do the dishes the way my mind is. You know, it's just like, oh, my gosh, he's going to leave that for me. Yeah. How, well, you know, life can't get much better than that. You know, because if I'm not in service to myself, mm -hmm. and, and if I'm, I'm obviously the one that wants the kitchen cleaned, I ask him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if he's not up for it, then it gives me an opportunity to, to serve myself. And if he enjoys the king, clean kitchen, all the better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for someone who's single and wants to be in a relationship, would you say put all their thoughts on paper on the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet that oh, gets them? Oh, I so would. I so would. Like, I would start with, I'm, I'm sad because I don't have a partner. Yes. on statement one on the judge your neighbor worksheet and for statement two on the judge your neighbor worksheet it's i want a partner yes i yes. want someone to adore me yes i mm. want to live with someone that's mm. kind mm. and then on the next statement on the judge your neighbor worksheet what advice you know that's um i should have a partner I should have someone kind in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, then for the next one, to be happy, I need a partner. Yeah. I need someone to have children with. I need mm -hmm. someone who will love and appreciate me. You know, what, whatever, whatever is there that, I, that, that, um, that appears on this worksheet. And then on the next one, it's... Um, Number five on the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet, um, I am alone, I'm unloved, mm. I don't have anyone to take care of me, yeah. there's something wrong with me, Yeah. I'm not okay without a partner, yeah. I'll never have children, <laughs> mm. and um, I'll never be happy. Mm. Whatever arises there, yeah. and and then on the very last one, you know, I'm willing to um, be sad. I'm willing to. It would be. I don't ever want to live without. I don't want to live my my life without a partner. Mm. Yeah, I would try that one on. And then, those of you new to the work listening to this, you take those concepts on the Judge and Ibu worksheet, those judgments mm. and um, that you fill in yourself, and question them. And yeah. the first question is, is it true? You want a partner, is it true? Yeah. And the second question, are you sure you want a partner? <laughs> Can you absolutely know that it's true? Yeah. Look at your yeah. life. You really do? Is it true? And then the third question, there are only four. Notice how you react, what happens to you, to you, to your life when you believe the thought that you want a partner. Notice what happens emotionally. And just sit in that and and contemplate how you live when you believe that. And then the last question, who would you be? Look at your life without the thought. I want a partner. What would it be like to live your life without the thought if you didn't have that? You just notice the, the freedom of that. 
mm. the, the lack of burden in that. And look at yourself with the thought I I want a partner and without the thought and and then of course we turn around I want a partner turn around I don't want a partner and then we just get very still the work you know we're meditating on these judgments mm -hmm. so I don't want a partner what does that mean to me I don't want a partner mm -hmm. hmm. don't want a partner yeah they want to control the television remote mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah they Gosh, they, and that list can really grow. When we look at, at we begin to notice how, uh, what wonderful lives we have yes. and how self-sufficient we are. Yes. And um, we become really grateful for what we've got with or without a partner. That's ours. Yes. Yes. And that's what I love about inquiry. It really, we become self-aware self realize we realize ourself for ourself ourself and we meet an amazing human being mm -hmm. and you know anyone in the world that could say katie you are worthless and i think that's just amazing how they see me they don't know me yeah but my self esteem would not drop mm -hmm. not one teeny tiny bit because I'm awake. I've done mm. my work. If mm. someone says, Katie, there is something terribly wrong with you, yeah. then I become curious mm. because I've done my work. I don't say, well, there's something wrong with you and you hurt my feelings and oh, there's something wrong with you. you know, there's no way possible to go into that once you have realized for yourself, yourself. Mm -hmm. This goes beyond size or shape or religion or color or fat, thin. It's, it's beyond all. When you mm -hmm. know yourself, you're, you, you, you're in love. And no one can take that away from you. And that is the power that we have all have. It's the power of of. Just, you know, we've heard the expression, know thyself. Well, you know, the work, that's the invitation. Know yourself for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled by what the world believes or what you believe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just question it, question it, question it. Um, well, thank you so much, Katie, for just spending this time with me. <laughs> been really wonderful. <laughs> oh, Andrea, you are so welcome. You know, I'm coming to I'm coming to the UK again this yeah. summer and and I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Mm. Love you. Bye, honey. <laughs>